Hi, I'm Colette Pat. I direct the diversity programs in the mathematical and physical sciences at Berkeley. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about letters of recommendation for graduate school and fellowships. A very special welcome to this webinar to the LSM students. I hope this is helpful to you as well. Talking about letters of recommendation, those of you who are applying to graduate school and for fellowships to support your way through graduate school, it's very important that you um, have good letters of recommendation. What are letters of recommendation? What do you need them for? How, how many of them do you need? How do you get them? How do you ask for them? Who do you ask for them? What's the timeline for getting them? Those are some of the questions that you might be asking. And I'm here to answer some of those questions. What are letters of recommendation? Let's address that first. Letters of recommendation are letters supporting your graduate application or your application for fellowship from primarily faculty in the field that you would like to go into for your graduate studies. They can either come from faculty or from people that you've conducted research with. And I'll talk a little bit later about who to ask and how to decide between different people that you might want to ask for letters of recommendation from. The letters should be supportive of you. They should uh, be from faculty who can um, advise their colleagues at other places to in fact admit you, accept you to gradu the gradu their graduate programs, or award you fellowships. So you want to be sure to get good and positive letters of recommendation. What do you need them for? You need letters of recommendation as part of your complete graduate admission package. So when you apply, the, um, the faculty who are reviewing your application will look at the many different parts of your application and they will pay particular attention to your letters of recommendation. Why is that? They're looking not only at what you've done, your transcript, um, what you say you want to do, your statement of purpose, any scores that demonstrate that you are a high achiever, like perhaps GRE scores. They're also looking for verification from their colleagues at your home institution or at national labs or other places you might have done research that you are a very good scholar, that you are very promising in science, math, or engineering, and that you will do well at the graduate level. They're looking to their colleagues who are your faculty for that kind of word of verification. So that word of verification comes in the letters of recommendation. You need them both for your graduate admissions applications and for all your fellowship applications. How many of them do you need? You need three generally for graduate admissions and four for some fellowships. So as you think about getting your letters of recommendation, you should be thinking about four or five faculty that you could approach to ask for letters of recommendation and then figuring out among those four or five faculty which three you really want to prioritize for the graduate schools that you are most interested in getting into, the ones that perhaps are going to be most challenging for you to get into, and then an additional one or two who can write letters for you for, to support your applications for fellowships. How do you go about getting the letters of recommendation? How do you ask for them? What's the timeline for doing that? So here's the funny thing about letters of recommendation. Although you don't write it, although the faculty write them, it is still your responsibility to make sure that they are done and that they are in by the right deadlines to all the places that they need to go. That's a bit of a challenge. So to help you meet that challenge, here's some advice. Before you go ask the faculty, set your timeline. You should be asking the faculty for these letters well in advance of when you actually need them. You should ask them to please try to submit the letters in advance of the actual deadline so that you insert a little bit of time to go back and um, bug the faculty a little if they haven't gotten their letters in on time. 
So when do you ask for them? You should be thinking about who to ask really the summer before you apply to graduate school. So your graduate applications are going to be due usually in somewhere between October and January at most places. Your fellowship applications are going to be due on the same timeline. In order to give the faculty enough time to really write their letters thoughtfully and carefully for you, you need to approach them usually in the summer or at least be thinking about who you will approach in the summer so that come August or September when school goes back into session, you can show up in those faculty members' offices and start asking them for the letters. All right, how do you go about asking for them? When you ask for letters of recommendation, if you feel a little shy about it, you can start with an email. Ultimately, though, I very strongly recommend to you that you make, if you, that you make a face-to-face -face contact with and a face-to-face in-person appointment with the faculty members that you're asking for letters from if they are at your home institution or in the immediate geographic vicinity that you live. Of course, if you did an internship or a research placement far away from your college, you can't go meet with them in person and then your whole interaction will be over the phone or by email, which is fine. But if the person is close by to where you live, you do want to go and meet with them face to face. It's fine though in any event for your first interaction to be by email. And the email can be a very simple email that just says that you're applying to graduate school, that you would like to request a letter of recommendation for them for your graduate applications and your fellowship applications, and that you'd like to meet with them or talk further with them about which places you're applying to, the deadlines for these letters, and whether they would be willing to write a letter that would help you to get into those places or to win those fellowships. It's a very simple email that explains your intentions and your desire to talk further with them about this. Don't worry if they don't respond, especially those of you who are at big universities, major research universities. Sometimes over the summer the faculty are very intently doing their own research and they pay a little less attention to their email. Sometimes faculty are just very, very busy and they don't get a chance to respond to every email that comes by. And they may really want to write you a letter and they don't respond. Don't get turned off. Keep going back to them a couple times. Try being persistent. Remember, Getting the letters is your responsibility because they're an important part of your graduate application and your application for fellowships. If they're not in there and they're not there to support you, it's going to be your career that will suffer. So you really need to make sure that they're there to make your applications complete. So if the faculty don't respond right away, go back and be persistent. Just politely remind them that you've emailed them previously and you're hoping to hear back from them. If they're at your home institution, let them know that you'll drop by in their office hours. So just be politely persistent. So remember, politely persistent, but persistent. When you go to talk to the faculty, so if they respond to you and they say, sure, they'd be happy to write a letter for you, or um, OK, they, you know, please come by and see me, or any kind of, uh, when, when you finally get some kind of positive response, make an appointment and go by to see them. When you go see them, take uh, the following information with you. First, take a letter, of, take, a, take a list of all the places that you're thinking of applying to graduate school. So all the schools that you want to apply for. When you go and talk to the faculty member, you're going to use that list to ask them if they could write you a letter of recommendation for those places in particular. Could they write you a letter that will help uh, your application to succeed at those particular places? Or are there other places that they would recommend that you apply to that you have not yet thought about to put on your list? The way that they respond will give you an indication of whether they think that you're aiming at the right level for graduate school or not, or they might be able to tell you about some programs that are very good in the area that you want to go into or where you can really um, do research in the area that interests you that you're not aware of or haven't yet thought about. And so that can be a very helpful interaction. Also, take with a copy of your transcript and remind them about the way that they know you. So you might be asking somebody for a letter because you took a course with them and did very well in their course. You might be asking somebody for a letter because that you did research with them in their lab. 
You might be asking somebody for a letter because you did research in their lab, but they didn't have a lot of interaction with you. You worked primarily with their graduate students and postdocs, so you may have to go and talk to them about what you did in their lab. Make sure that, they know, that they've seen your transcript, that they know your grades, that they know what you've done. And when you go meet with them, use that as an opportunity to explain anything in your transcript that you're not particularly happy or proud of. To explain to them what happened in those various courses or that semester or that quarter when perhaps things didn't go as you hoped they would. Make sure that you explain that to them so that they understand, especially if there are um, grades or, experience or, or periods of your transcript that are inconsistent with their knowledge of you as an outstanding student. Sometimes a faculty member will choose to write in their letter that there are inconsistencies and that it's the part of you that they saw, the excellent part of you where you did very well, that is your true promise as a scientist and that can be very compelling to an admissions committee. So be sure to explain to them what happened if you didn't do well in a course along the way or a semester or a quarter or a year of your studies. There's usually a pretty good explanation and you can go ahead and give it to them. Take with a draft of your statement of purpose. It doesn't have to be a complete polished version. In fact, it shouldn't be because you're going to invite them to give you feedback. And leave it with them. They may give you feedback, they may not. If they do, it will be helpful to you. Be sure to also include a copy of the list of fellowships that you're applying to because the fact that you're applying for fellowships like the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy, the um, Ford Foundation Fellowship, the GEM Consortium Fellowship, these will all be indications to them that you're very serious about going to graduate school and that you want to go to a, to a good place that you, you're, apply, you're being ambitious in applying for support to do that. Okay, and then finally, take a table to the faculty, or better yet, uh, take a hard copy and also email them a table with your name, your phone number, a phone number that you can be reached at, your cell phone number preferably, your email address, an email address that you check regularly, um, and the names of the places that you're applying to, both the graduate programs and the fellowships that you're applying for. Include the list of places and fellowships that you're applying to, the URLs where they will be submitting their letter of recommendation, and the due dates, and also any kind of special information that they may need or any special points that you want them to highlight in their letters. And that would not be, you can't really instruct the faculty in what to write, but you could request that they highlight certain things, perhaps that came out of your conversation with them about what they might write in their letter of recommendation. I'm going to address very quickly some questions that people usually ask me about letters, like should you um, ask, if, should you ask people who know you less well but are better known, or people who know you better? In general, the strongest letters come from the people who know you best in contexts where you have performed very well academi academically or in research. So the best letters, the strongest letters, tend to come from faculty or researchers who have had the opportunity to closely observe your work and who know you very well and can write about that. It's more important to get letters from people who really know you as a scholar or a researcher than from people who just have like a big name or are well known. It's actually the content of the letter that will be persuasive to that faculty member's colleagues. People sometimes ask me if they should get letters from graduate students or postdocs, particularly if they've worked in a lab and they really haven't been in contact with the principal investigator who's the faculty member or the staff scientist. They've only worked with graduate students and postdocs. Sometimes students are taught by postdocs or graduate students and they've done very well in those courses and they haven't really had much um, interaction with the faculty member who might be lecturing in the course. What do you do in that situation? So one thing I recommend is, well, well first I would say that anyone who has a PhD, um, who has a doctorate, or who is a professional researcher or a professional instructor, 
uh, whether they have a PhD or not. If that is their occupation, if they're professionally teaching as a member of the faculty at your institution or professionally working as a staff scientist in a lab, can write you a very good letter and will be taken seriously. So that's fine to do. If it's a graduate student, I caution you to rather ask the graduate student to go visit the faculty member with you. And sometimes faculty will write a letter including input from the graduate student who has worked most closely with you in the lab or from the graduate student who has been your instructor in a, in a discussion section of the class. So that's usually the best way to make sure that you have the faculty member actually write the letter, but also have the graduate student's input if that's possible for you. Um, other questions that I'm sometimes asked are um, what you should do if you are choosing to go into a field other than the one that you have your bachelor's degree in. So let's say you have been trained as a physicist at the undergraduate level, that's what your BA is in, but your, your, or, your, or your BS, but you'd like to get your PhD in engineering. Who should you ask for letters from? So in most circumstances, it's advisable to have at least one letter from a faculty member or a scientist or researcher in the field that you'd like to go into. It's okay to have the other letters come from people you took courses with in physics, say, whatever the field is that you came out of. That's fine and you should benefit from the relationships you've established in the field that you came out of. But it's very important if you can to have a letter from somebody in the discipline that you'd actually like to do your PhD work in, if you can. Um, sometimes people ask me if they um, should get letters that they've been asked to write themselves. And in those situations, it can be help. sometimes faculty will do that. And in that situation, it's good to actually draft a letter and give it to the faculty member. But make sure that it's in draft form so that the faculty member actually adds their own information to the letter and that it really reflects the faculty member's communication with their colleagues. So faculty do. Um, do speak to other faculty um, in particular ways that are very important for you to have uh, indicated in your letters of recommendation. In general, um, people who are going to take a year off from graduate school or who are are uh, not planning to go immediately to graduate school will ask me if they should wait and then get the letters when they actually apply or if they should try to get the letters um, when they finish up their undergraduate work. So I'd like to make just a brief comment about memory. Um, as I said earlier in this webinar, it's very important for the faculty to be able to speak to um, the distinctive and unique things that you have done as a student in their class or a researcher in their lab. And in order to do that effectively, it's helpful if their memory of you is quite recent. So I do strongly recommend that if you are planning to wait a year before going to graduate school or longer than that, if there's something else you want to do, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do that. But go ask for the letters of recommendation as if you were going directly to graduate school. That's when the faculty or the researchers that you've done research with in their lab will remember you best. So ask for the letters as early as you possibly can um, and then if you decide to wait a year before you go or if you defer and you get admitted and you defer and decide to wait and you need to reapply to a graduate program, you can go back to those faculty and update them and ask them to update their letter. Update them about what you've been doing and update their letter. All right. Good luck getting your letters of, of recommendation. Um, remember, make sure to get three. Make sure to ask for letters that will help you to get where you want to go, to the graduate program you want to get into, to win the fellowships that you'd like to win. Um, make sure to ask the faculty in person, to ask them often, and to give them enough information to write good, strong, positive letters for you. Good luck.